Ja, ja. So, I will show myself to you, my friend. Где моя лучше? Понятно или нет, кстати? Непонятно, как это мы его сохраним, если клочки нажимают. О! Hello everyone, my name is Kirill and you are on the Audio Advisor channel. Today we'll talk about hydraulic valve lifters and carry out a couple of interesting experiments. As you know, there is a so-called gas distribution mechanism inside the engine, which is responsible for the opening and closing of the intake and exhaust valves on time. The valves themselves open directly with the help of camshafts. Here I have a sample. It has so-called cams, and when the camshaft rotates, the cams begin to act on the valve. The valve goes down and thus opens. Though so these two parts, the valve and the camshaft, are constantly in contact with each other. And the problem is that when the engine heats up, the linear dimensions of the parts change, and the so-called thermal gap appears at this point of contact. I am now showing the gap on a scale, but in fact, it's very small. The size of this gap is 0.1.2 mm. In fact, here it is. It's like it doesn't exist, but it exists. If a thermal gap occurs between the valves and the cam, it usually causes a distinctive noise as engine is running. The opening of the valves themselves is flawed, and even engine power may decrease. Of course, when designing cars, engineers took into account the fact that a thermal gap will occur. So they design parts in such a way to minimize the size of this very gap. But still, it's impossible to completely eliminate it. Therefore, for older engine models, approximately every 10,000 kilometers, it was necessary to manually adjust this thermal gap. So if you had an old car, you would manually set the gaps between the valves and camshafts. A special set of tools was sold. There were thin plates in it that had to be pushed into the gap and manually set its lengths, while also remembering to do that every 10,000 kilometers. And take into account that you'd have to know how to do it also. So, over time, as you probably got by now, an automatic device was developed that adjusts and maintains zero valve clearance. And this device is called a hydraulic valve lifter, or hydraulic tappet, or hydraulic lash adjuster. From the very name of it, it's clear that this device is adjusting something, in this case, our thermal gap. And the prefix hydra indicates that liquid is used inside it. In the case of an engine, oil is used there. Hydraulic lifters are installed directly between the valves and the camshaft cam. In most cases, it looks something like this. Here is the valve, then the hydraulic lifter, and lastly, the camshaft. I said in most cases, because the valves do not always work directly with the camshaft. Sometimes there is also a set of levers and rocker arms between the camshaft and the valves. And so, based on all of this, the hydraulic lifters themselves come in several types. This is called a hydraulic pusher, this is a hydraulic support, this is also a hydraulic support, and this is a roller hydraulic pusher, because there is such a nice roller here. Now let's look at the principle of work of hydraulic lifters. As you already understood, there are several types of them, they are of course structurally slightly different from each other, but the principle of operation remains the same. Let's do a little experiment. For this I need a syringe, inside of which I inserted a regular spring and also I need a small container of water. It should be clear that the hydraulic lifter reciprocates. The amplitude of these movements is small, literally one-tenth of a millimeter, and therefore keep in mind that my movements will have a much larger amplitude. The initial position of the hydraulic tappet is a little preloaded. Let's say there is a thermal gap here, which we must compensate. 
There is also an oil supply to the hydraulic lifter. Let's say we have oil supply through this hole and liquid, but water in this case. In order to compensate this thermal gap, the hydraulic tappet raises its upper part with the help of a spring, and at this moment, oil is filling the hydraulic tappet. Let me show you this again. Here is the starting position. Now the spring has gone up and oil is being pulled inside the hydraulic lifter. So now that we have zero valve clearance while the camshaft and hydraulic lifter in those positions. So when the shaft turns and the cam presses on the valve itself, we must maintain this position of a tappet. It's not clear how it stays this way, because if we press the syringe, the water will pour out. How are we going to maintain it? Well, I will explain. Let's go back to the starting position. Take some liquid, like this. In fact, there is a one-way check valve in the bottom of the plunger that allows oil to enter the plunger cavity, but traps the oil inside when the lifter moves up. This prevents the lifter from collapsing, which would not allow to open the valve fully. So now I will close it with my finger, thus simulating a valve. And when we try to press the hydraulic lifter, it does not collapse, because the oil is incompressible. So now the hydraulic tappet is closed and retains its position. That is, it retains the small clearance. But in real life, when the cams press on the hydraulic tappet, some oil still leaks through the cap in the plunger hole, because of the speed of valve closing. So when the cams are pressed, something like this happens. Here is a little oil leaked out, and then here is a little oil leaked out, and then the cycle repeats again. When the cam has already turned, went up, then hydraulic tappet again picks up oil, the spring moves it up and the thermal gap is eliminated. This way the hydraulic lifter works. It should be noted that oil is involved in the operation of the hydraulic lifter, so always contacting the body and plunger oil holes in the hydraulic lifter through which this oil enters. In this case, this is a small hole, perhaps it will not be very well seen on the camera. Since you yourself saw that this hole is small and the hydraulic tapel is a pretty small device itself, the durability of its life depends on how. The durability of its life depends how on the quality of the oil. I hope that with this example it became clear to you how the hydraulic lifter works. If it so happened that you need to buy a new one, then be sure to go to our website autoostrov.by. A few words about operation. With high mileage or with an untimely oil change or by using low-quality oil, it happens that these hydraulic lifters simply jam or stop working. Then there is noise, can be heard, as I said, increased wear and even a decrease in engine power. The reasons for the failure of hydraulic tappet are simple. It's the wear of the plunger pair itself or the jamming of the spring or valve. So, this is basically all that I wanted to say about hydraulic lifters, why they are needed, how they work, and I showed you this with this little experiment. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. All the best to you and see you again!